It's full of pageantry, beautiful horses, cheering crowds. It's been woven into the history of Toronto since before Confederation. Today, we're talking about the history of the King's Plate. It's Canada's oldest thoroughbred horse race. It's North America's longest consistently run stakes race. It's where fortunes are made, where people wear beautiful hats, and likely your entire life it's been called the Queen's Plate. But the naming of the race is based on the reigning monarch. And this year on August 20th, it will be known as the King's Plate. The first time since 1951. The race now named the King's Plate, again, originated as the Queen's Plate in 1860, named after Queen Victoria, and taking place right here at the Carlton Racecourse in Toronto's present-day Junction neighborhood. One of the things I've always found interesting about the King and Queen's Plate is how long it's been going. When I think about Toronto history, there's only really one other thing somewhat similar, and that's the CNE, the Canadian National Exhibition. But the CNE is actually a lot younger. The King's Plate that takes place this August will be the 164th consecutive running of the race. But the location and race itself has not always been the same, and nor has Toronto. In 1859, Sir Casimir Zowski petitioned Queen Victoria to grant a new plate for a race in Canada West. And on June 27, 1860, the first Queen's Plate was run. But Toronto of the time looked like this, and this, and that. And these photos right here were the first photos ever taken of Toronto, just four years prior. The naming of the race always matches the contemporaneous monarch in Canada. So let's take a quick look back at the history of the naming of the race. It was named the Queen's Plate from 1860 to 1901, after Queen Victoria. Named the King's Plate from 1902 until 1951. The Queen's Plate again from 1952 until 2022. And now, for the first time in over 70 years, as the King's Plate. I'm currently sitting here at Woodbine Racetrack in one of their beautiful rooms, but this was not always the location of the running of the King and Queen's Plate. It's true, the race has been run here since 1956 when the track opened. At the time, Woodbine Racetrack was known creatively as New Woodbine Racetrack. The race started here, then bounced around the province before settling at the old Woodbine Racecourse in Toronto's East End in 1879, later renamed the Greenwood Raceway. And then finally, right here, the present-day Woodbine Racetrack. The original race was run in heats, but was discontinued in 1879 after the move to Woodbine. The rules, age of the horse, and distance has fluctuated over the past century and a half. But since the race moved to its present spot at Woodbine Racetrack, formerly known as New Woodbine Racetrack, it's been run as a one and a quarter mile. The King's Plate you will be able to see this August will feature those beautiful hats and outfits I mentioned earlier. But the posh nature of the race is actually long-standing. Let's quickly take a look back at some of the races through the years, as well as some of the guests, some being royalty. Today is Canada's Derby Day, and 40,000 people are crowded into the Toronto-famous Woodbine Park to watch the 80th running of the Dominion's foremost turf classic, the King's Plate. Skies are dull, but there is gaiety everywhere and a colorful scene to warm the heart and gladden the eye as the Royal Lando brings the King and Queen to witness the event. Owner of the winning thoroughbred Archworth receives a gold cup and 50 commemorative guineas from the hands of the King. The Golden Sovereigns are being presented in person. The other occasion was in 1939 when Her Majesty's father presented the Sovereigns to the late Mr. George McCullough. The history of the race is older than the CNE. It's older than Confederation. When the King and Queen attended 
1939, the race was already eight decades old. Alongside the $1 million prize awarded to the victorious horses these days is 50 guineas, a nod to the original 1860 prize. The prize was 50 guineas, and they still give out these, you know, fictional 50 guineas. And I, each time I read this, I'm thinking, what are 50 guineas worth right now, and what are guineas? And keep asking myself that. And the plate is actually a trophy, and the race is actually the first leg of the Canadian Triple Crown. But the real stars have hooves and tails. Take, for instance, the legendary Northern Dancer, the 1964 Queen's Plate champion. But the beautiful horse from Oshawa was not solely just a Queen's Plate victor. Northern Dancer would go on to win the Kentucky Derby and Preakness Stakes in the U.S., amongst many other races. Now, the families and farms behind the victors of the Queen's Plate and King's Plate are some of the most famous names in Canadian history. The Seagram family from Waterloo won the Queen's and King's Plate 20 times from 1891 to 1935, including a succession of eight victories in a row, as celebrated in this painting. So, the theme of succession, the passing of the batons, dare I say, can be related to the naming of the race, the families that own and run the stables, and even the horses themselves, often being part of the lineage of former horses that raced in the competition. Woodbine recently invited me into their archives. I'm in the archives right now, and because I'm super geeky, I find this very exciting. Uh, there is footage from, quick, let's go this way. Right here, QP, Queen's Plate. I think they're gonna need a KP section pretty soon. Um, but it's so cool to see all, all the footage from decades and decades and decades. There's actually the film reels back there and stuff like that. So let's quickly take a look around here. And there are a whole bunch of different formats. So depending on the era, you know, there's a lot of these beta, beta tapes here. And there's a few formats that I literally don't know what they are. But because the archives here is taken care of so well, I assume it's pretty fancy. Wow. The Sony Automatic Editing Control Unit BVE900 version 2.0. One of my favorites, absolute beast. No clue what it means. Let's see. Uh, wow, what's this? Yeah, maybe I should be a bit, okay. This thing, uh, maybe I'll put this, this one back here. Might be some old yeah, let me go over here. <clears throat> oh, wow. Those, oh, the records. Wow. So they, these are records of the King's Plate 1949. So it won't have been on television. So this would be an audio recording of the race, which is wildly cool. So there are boxes and boxes of the film footage, which I will keep safe for now. Put it back nicely. That is actually really, really cool. Not gonna lie. So whether you come here in person on August 20th to watch the King's Plate race, or you watch it on TV, make sure to take some time to think about the history of this race, because this race in many ways shadows the history of Toronto and Canada itself. I'm on the track right now, and to tell you the truth, it's beautiful, but it's also a little bit intimidating because you feel as though, I guess they would be coming from this side, but you know, Horses are beautiful, but uh, these ones I want to see from a bit of a distance. 